Accessory dependent phones have existed for many years in multiple forms, and it seems like they always follow the same script. The experience at launch with no accessories or just a couple of weird ones is meh at best, which leads to poor sales, which leads to very little incentive to keep creating accessories for the tiny user base, which ultimately leads to failure. So I guess that's why Asus went full ham preparing not just a couple, but an entire suite of gaming related, shoot, gaming related accessories for their ROG phone. Uh, some of which like, uh, oh yeah, this one right here, give you such a big competitive edge that they should probably be considered cheating. Anywho, we've got all of them. So we're just gonna like get these puppies opened up and go through a, uh, oh, oh, hold on a second. Oh, right. <laughs> Sponsors. <laughs> Glasswire lets you instantly see your current and past network activity, detect malware, and block badly behaving apps on your PC or Android device. Use offer code Linus and get 25% off Glasswire at the link in the video description. The biggest issue to me with the accessories on some of the devices that I alluded to before was that the features that they offered, and this was particularly true in the case of the Moto Z and its modules, didn't have a clear benefit over existing device agnostic options and or they were unreasonably expensive. So challenge number one for Asus is at a reasonable price, giving me functionality that is as good or greater than someone else's one size fits all option. So we've got their desktop dock here. That's gonna cost you about 230 bucks. We've got their professional dock. So we'll figure out what the difference is there. That's gonna cost you 120. We've got the, whew, these ones are, whew. the Y gig dock is gonna be 330. And then the twin view dock is gonna be $400 with, in my opinion, the most interesting one for most people, the game vice coming in at 90 bucks. So that's looking okay, kind of mixed bag, I guess. But even the good things here are gonna be worthless if they can't address challenge number two building a good enough phone that you'd actually want to use it when it's not docked to an accessory. So, the ROG phone then. It's decidedly futuristic looking with near 360 degree Gorilla Glass, Asus's ubiquitously edgy line design, and fancy orange accents. The screen is a six inch HDR OLED panel rocking a 2160 by 1080 resolution with, in my opinion, far more importantly, this buttery smooth 90 Hertz refresh rate. Like, Honestly, other manufacturers out there, take notice because this needs to be way more common on mobile devices. And while we're at it, this does too. Yes, my friends, it has a headphone jack. Though, to be clear, other manufacturers, I'm not saying you should all be more like Asus in every way because the UI design of the default theme on this phone is terra bad. The only good thing I can say about it is that they give you the option to change it. So we made a custom theme that looks as close to stock Android as possible, and then we pretended like the other thing just never happened. The volume and lock buttons are pretty clicky, which is nice, but given that they're on the same side and close together, I wish they had kind of different textures so that they're easier to feel in your pocket. And then on the opposite side, you've got, whoa, no buttons, but rather something that you've probably never seen before. This double USB type C port thing. So Asus is touting this as a way to charge your phone without obstructing your hands while you're gaming. And I'm with them there, but whether this was an unintended side effect or not, it's also finally the solution to the long time issue of charging your phone while watching Netflix in bed. And it gets better. It also serves as a connection hub for most of the accessories that we're going to get into in a little bit here. I gotta turn that down. Oh yeah, the speakers are really loud. <laughs> uh, almost all of the accessories connect directly to this special port, which by the way, has a huge warning on it out of the box, not to plug power into the wrong one, because half of it is wired up more normally, like for charging, while the other half is presumably set up for the rest of the HDMI output, gigabit LAN, second headphone jack, and presumably laser vision functionality that's included with this phone. 
Uh, actually, ASUS couldn't confirm that last one. Another thing that sets this device apart is the CPU. So yes, it's a Snapdragon 845, like all the other flagship phones from this year, but ASUS is actually binning the SOCs specifically for this phone, allowing them to reach 2.96 gigahertz, as opposed to the stock 2.8 gigahertz. It doesn't sound like a lot, probably because it isn't, but it's enough to call it the fastest 845 equipped phone, and this does show in our synthetic tests. Too bad the Snapdragon 855 is already upon us. Anyway, because of that extra clock speed boost, it's bound to run hotter, and to combat this, ASUS implemented a massive vapor chamber, like this is a pretty heavy phone, and copper plate that does seem to mostly work, with the warmth evenly spread out throughout most of the device under load, instead of it just kind of singeing your fingers on one hand instead of both of them. Battery life is also a plus thanks to the thick 4,000 milliamp hour battery inside, which brings us then to the accessories. Now I could give you some fancy B-roll of them while I read out the spec list, but instead, Jake and I are just gonna try them all out and give you guys some candid live impressions. What are we gonna do first? Oh man. Oh, you uh, almost ran over my foot. Oh, my oh dude. Ah, sorry. Okay, so this is the one accessory you get for free. This is the ROG phone cooling fan. Uh, basically, it's just got a little sliding slider so that it can clamp onto the phone. It's got a little tiny, like what would that even be? Like a 30 mil fan, yeah. something stupid like that. Little tiny fan that's got kind of like a ventilation thing above it here. And then it's got their proprietary dual C connector and then a charging port and a headphone jack. Now, did, did you like try to benchmark this or, or what? Uh, see, I tried, but phones, the way that the like temperatures and stuff, it, it's kind of inconsistent. Like I'd, I'd load up a game, the same scene, and the phone would be at 35 and then I'd do it again and it would be at 32, like regardless of putting the fan on. So I don't know. But it, like subjectively, when you have it on, it definitely feels cooler in the hand. Right, it's just a matter of how much that change in surface temperature is actually affecting yeah. the internals. And it might, based on how the cooling layout is inside there. It's yeah. pretty big. So this is interesting. The way that it works is that you actually aren't expecting a lot of the cooling to happen here. Like there's no thermal compound or anything like that. So it just vents the air out either side. So, you know, I could kind of see it cooling your hands as much as cooling the phone being yeah. a benefit here. It goes pretty loud, actually. Oh, and it's got a little RGB light on the back. So if you turn Aura on, it, you don't lose your RGB light anymore. <laughs> For gaming. gaming. Yeah, I got that god. dinosaur. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh, actually, he's unconscious. I didn't kill him, I think. So does it feel hot on your hand or what? No, actually. I think for me, the biggest benefit is not even like cooling the phone necessarily, but because you know how your hands can get sweaty when you're yeah. holding a warm phone? Well, the phone doesn't even feel warm. You can see your GPU, 70%. Oh yeah, it's got that cool little overlay. 31 degrees on the phone. That's like, that's the low, 30. That's the lowest I've ever seen it. Like, oh, it's, it's cool like, out here in the warehouse. This is true, yeah. Yeah, that's probably a factor. Okay, hit me with the game vice. So basically the way this guy works is you've got both halves of a controller. You've got your R1, R2, L1, L2, and then you've got kind of this flexible bit here that stretches a little bit. So it's kind of spring loaded on the inside there. Oh, and this guy only uses the side type C. Or the phone actually comes with two games. Uh, this one's kind of like a PUBG clone. Are they even trying to make it not look like a PUBG clone? It looks like a dating game, like Sims or something like that, you know? Like Grand Theft Auto dating, like thug, <laughs> thugdating.com. Man, these controls are so much better than trying to use on screen. Okay, so I'm not a huge fan of how f the positioning of like the A button compared to the yeah. positioning of the stick here. Um, PUBG Mobile. Okay, so this game doesn't, at least from what I understand, doesn't natively support these controls, but Asus has this really, really sick feature. We should actually probably show it once we're actually in a game, but you can set custom key mapping. Right, and so this is, so there, that's just your analog stick. So you just yeah. kind of plunk that down wherever the analog stick is in the game. And then the game has no idea. So even if they try and block this for like competitive reasons. Mm -hmm. They'd, how are they gonna do that? There's no way, yeah. So th then this is just look. There's yeah, your right so analog stick. Yeah, you put stick. it wherever you want and change your sensitivity. Wow, that's yeah, pretty cool. Of individual sticks even. 
Like I can't even tell the difference between the one that's uh, mapped natively and the one that we just set yeah, up. Yeah. If you don't have this controller actually, you can also configure something called air triggers. And so there are these little like, I think they're 20 gram actuation point, little like oh, okay. ultrasonic yeah. buttons here. So your triggers can be actually on top of the phone so you don't have right. to have that on the screen. So that can be cool too. No, I got him! No Wait, way, what? what? What the heck? Okay, come on. What? Oh, you got him. Woo! Oh my gosh. What the heck? That's All right, hilarious. so clearly more configuration required. Yeah. Does it support like multiple profiles, like driving profile and stuff? I think so, I don't know. Okay. I think right. you could just make a new one or something. Right, like okay, so they've got some work to do. Yeah. And this is the, the twin, twin view. view. This is heavy. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot inside. Like, there's a fan in the top. I think it, it's probably a beefier one than the, than the little fan attachment. Okay. You have the Locking full, up. same screen as on the phone. So that's the same six inch OLED, super okay. nice panel, and a yeah. 6,000 milliamp hour battery. Okay, so like that's basically 1. the point 1.5 the this. phone on top of the And phone. a full-sized SD card reader? Yeah, hell yeah. What? I don't even know what you would use that but for. But then like, it's so weird because they only put one shoulder button on each side. And, like... Yeah, I think the point is you still use like the, the firing on the screen. Yeah. And then you can have your triggers. Oh yeah, baby. Dude, this phone is fast. Okay, I'm chugging a little bit now though. Yeah, I can, but Like I can feel it. That's crazy. Like, who, this is a weird use case. But I think there is one game that actually makes use of both screens. Okay. One of the ones they included, it's the PUBG clone. I think you can have your map up top here. Yeah, I still don't have a ton of hope for, <laughs> I'm not 100% With a really nice screen on this one. I mean, I'd love to hear your comments below, guys. Like, what would you use the dual screens for here? So next up, we've got the mobile desktop dock, which gives you microphone, headphone, HDMI, and display port. Gigabit Ethernet, four USB 3s, and manufacturers. Okay, everyone, stop doing this. If it's not Thunderbolt, don't put like a little lightning thing near it. I know that's not technically the same one, but just stop. They mean power, but it looks like Thunderbolt. Don't do that. Uh, another display port, one of those horrible USB micro B3 ones, and then an SD card. Why does this say sync? Do they mean S, Y, and C? Like these are both one output? You know what, let's not worry too okay. much about that. So what's the point of this? So this is a way to be able to use your phone with your regular computer's accessories. When you don't want to use the phone, it just acts as a pass-through for your regular desktop. But the really, really dumb thing is that cable you were talking about earlier. You have to use that to pass through the USB functionality to the PC. And it doesn't come with that cable. Does this have its own cooling fan that's like ripping it up in there? Wow. Whoa, that is loud. Uh, oh, whoa. Yeah, I think you can't do that in the game. <laughs> Mobile to desktop docking is one of those like, who's asking for this things? There we go, Jake. Let's watch Sabrina the Teenage It's not Witch. even like, port oh. wait, 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 no, you do the full screen of that. It's... Like it works. Yeah, but that's still a bad experience. Oh wait, oh, okay. Yeah, you can. So that's kind of working. I think it's just the games. I bet you they specifically lock it out of those like PUBG type games. So if you're like really into tower defense games, I guess this is kind of cool. <laughs> <laughs> I've never been sold on like uh, an Android desktop experience before and I don't think I'm sold today. Do you think it passes through G-Sync? <laughs> Come on. It might. It's worth a shot at least. 4K G-Sync, can this dock do it? Oh wow, yeah, it uh, did pass through G-Sync. And it's 4K. So I guess if you don't want to spend $330 yeah. on that, I don't. there is this. Okay, so this is the non-ROG version. Wait, whoa, 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 okay, okay, you actually need this. What? So you still get the, sa the stand-like functionality out of the cardboard. You need this. <laughs> <laughs> Are you kidding me? No, I'm not joking. This is an this is advertised functionality right here. <laughs> okay. I guess they weren't expecting such a heavy phone. <laughs> anyway, uh, I mean this still looks all right though. You've got your Ethernet, you've got your USB three, you've got your um, power in HDMI. I mean this overall this looks like it makes more sense to me. Other than the 
how to build a SUS professional dock stand. Yeah, I've never seen anything more professional in my life. And this, <laughs> this, this is fine. This is pro, the other thing, not pro. Let's try this. So you have to enable ethernet in the ethernet menu. So I've got that turned on. Did we get an IP? Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah so it seems to be working. Did you turn Wi-Fi off? Uh, I haven't. Maybe, do that. Okay. What do you think? I'm going 300. Oh, damn. Okay, so yeah, wow. that's... It's like not even used to this, so it just doesn't look how fast it is. Oh. It just doesn't even understand. Okay, so yeah, that definitely works. Nice. All right, so one more accessory then. This is the big kahuna. Uh, the kids say kahuna. Yeah. So this is no. the Y gig dock. It's got USB and HDMI. So it's like got way less functionality than the other ones, except it does USB and HDMI wirelessly using Y gig. So all we got to do theoretically is enable Y gig. We've already got this thing paired. And theoretically, a thing will happen here. Ah. Hey, okay. You could use that too. Okay. When you're playing games. Yeah, latency good. Really good. Uh, compression, not as good. Like, look at the way. It's weird, some things are really sharp. But yeah, no, it aren't. takes a second. Uh... Yeah, so that's what's, that's what's uh, going, going down here. See, like, watch these logos as I scroll through them. So you see that? Like, when they're in motion, they look like absolute garbage. And then, like, takes a sec. So in fairness to this, most people probably wouldn't be sitting four feet from a 77 inch screen. But to say that there is a clear image quality difference here, like even when we account for it being blown up would be an understatement. Like if you come and have a look at like... Yeah, there's quite a bit of compression. Yeah, there, there's a lot of compression. Like the, the image is quite fine here and it's quite less fine uh, here. Like this text would be sharp if we weren't wireless right now. Latency though, it's like you really said, solid. is really good. Like that's, that's probably better than a wireless Xbox controller on this TV. You know what, I'm actually less impressed now that I'm looking at it side by side. Again, in fairness, this is a 90 hertz display and that's super not and it's super wireless, but like I'd probably have to come up with some other use cases for it other than gaming to justify it for myself anyway. Oh, he's got buddies. Oh, oh no way! Whoa! What are you gonna do? You can't hit nothing. I can dance all day. Boom, boom, boom! Yeah, you like that? Yeah, you like that? Oh, yeah! Oh, <laughs> so the conclusions are pretty mixed here. The desktop dock, I guess, is pretty cool if you have a use case for it. I personally don't really, and I think the same can be said for the Y gig dock with price being a serious concern for both of those. The professional dock, though, I quite like other than the cardboard box stupid stand thing that they're doing. But I think the real star of the show has got to be the game vice here because this plus a portable battery pack to me makes more sense than this one in terms of how much better it legitimately makes you at real games, like how much more competitive it makes you. So I'm pretty happy with my experience overall, but I think ASUS still has a lot of fine tuning to do for what will undoubtedly be an ROG phone too. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. Which ones were your favorites? Which ones did you think were the worst? Oh, I'm being shot at again. If you need to create a website, we recommend Squarespace's all-in-one platform. Their award-winning templates make creating a powerful online identity easier than ever before, and every template can be a starting point for a wide range of projects. Squarespace provides award-winning 24-7 customer support via live chat and email, and you can attend a live webinar and check out their help guides if you're still having trouble. You can now transfer your third-party domains to Squarespace, so instead of working with multiple vendors to maintain your online presence, you can manage all of your domain and billing settings with Squarespace, and it's never been easier to sell products or services online. Squarespace allows you to easily manage your products, your orders, and your inventory, and every one of their templates comes with an online store. So head to squarespace.com forward slash LTT and use code LTT to get 10% off your first purchase. So thanks for watching guys. If you just liked this video, you can hit that button. But if you liked it, hit like, get subscribed, or maybe consider checking out where to buy the stuff we featured at the link in the video description. Also down there is our merch store, which has cool shirts like this one and our community forum, which you should definitely join.